episode of Speakers of Heidelin is made possible by our generous patrons. Special thanks to our supreme and master speakers, Omeji Cat Comet, Erisu Yamakawa, Circa Barakil, Remy Asalia, Arcadia Luna Shine, Alex Franco AV, Winebow Brood, Psyche, Asuta Starbreeze, Cletus Oreo, Nina Grimstarter, Nat Clay, Lily Black, Bob CC, Mikta Rabentau, Sapa Chakwatol, Edwin, Umbral Wind, Quick Levin, Pamela Isley, Camille Grino, Elenriel Maximus, Codrith Novelis, Mira Miri, Bay Barbale, Suno Chicano, Celeste Aunoitrell, Lazy Boy, A Bag of Dragonite, Luke Osborne, Pandalu Stormarrow, Tex, Yowie Wowie, Kai Lin, AJ Brainswordson, Anathus Moonscar, Arthur Law, Viridan Derard, Cypub, Spencer Christmas, and Noy Fafnir. Support the show and become a patron today at patreon.com slash speakersxiv. Thank you. It's Speaker Supply Good evening, Aorcians. Welcome to Speakers of Heidelin, episode 288. I'm Lakeel Bravestone, and I'm joined today by Mela Vanadar and Georgia Wiston. <gasps> Wait, you say? Where is Rollo Des? Well, Rollo isn't here this week, but he will be here next week. So just hold on. He'll, he'll be here next week. One more week. Yes. Today is episode 288. The date is February 26th. 2010. 2010. 2010. That's very weird. Uh, today's main topics. Um, we have three interview. Well, it's, it's complicated. We have interviews uh, with Yoshi P, um, Ishikawa, and Soken uh, today. So we'll go through that. Uh, and uh, we won an award. Uh, so we'll talk about that, that as well. So uh, we'll also we, be. We, yeah? Speakers won an award. Yeah. We won an award, and the interviews were with us. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, 14, of course. We're talking about 14. Um, and, uh, of course, we'll be reading your Mogmail speakers. Uh, speakersxiv.com slash Mogmail. Stay tuned for the post show. We'll be reading questions from the syndicate. Um, and that's that. I already mentioned that Rollo will be here next week. So um, uh, that's that. Also, I want to mention Gabe plays 14. That's not in our show notes, yeah. but I just remembered it now. That's the thing. Um, why not? Why not? He, you know, he's got a lot of free time on his hands. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, on his Steam Deck. So there you go. Another good use for it. Yes. Yes. All right. Uh, let's move into recent events. That's right. In recent events, uh, we'll start off with a surprising, maybe, uh, some surprising news. Uh, Encyclopedia Eorcia Volumes 1 and 2 um, will be made available in English digitally in May wow. 2022. So that's mm -hmm. for, um, I'm assuming for the, it says not available in Kindle, but uh, so I'm assuming it will be released for the Kindle, uh, but probably. I'll, yes, I would assume so. Do you think it will be available on other platforms? I don't know the I don't know the ebook market that well, <laughs> so I don't know if there's. Oh, I'm it's sure Amazon be... we're talking yeah. about here, so I don't know. Mm. Anyways, available well, digitally for those that uh, yes. don't have the physical and can't get it. I guess at least you can get it digitally. Um, yeah. See, so, I was saying that I, I hate. Uh, reading a PDF. Yes. Obviously. But there is one good use of it is you can search through it easily. Yes. That's true. You need to find something yeah. that would be very mm. yeah, that could be very useful for Lakeel if you Yeah, rather than having to scan I mean, through the book. Mm -hmm. I mean Lakeel has written throughout the entirety of his first volume at the very I can't place. believe so that. much so that I, I have already I've I ordered a new volume one so i can have a clean one so i'm waiting Good. for that mm -hmm. but yeah that's uh yeah my first book is like looks like shit it's full oh of like God. notes in the yeah 
Um, so I kind of want to see it. <laughs> like it would, te- I feel like it would terrify me, but I think it's like morbidly interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, one day I'll let you all look into my uh, book, which sounds. Are all the notes in Norwegian? Like- uh well that's even more nightmarish because they're in like the, it's used some norwegian some english <laughs> so it's like both uh so there you go maybe one day i can give that book away maybe that should be like a a, a prize one day oh yeah oh yes get lakeel's old shitty uh encyclopedia Orsia. um okay um moving on uh there's new artwork of um uh, I forgot her name. Vanar. Vanar. <laughs> the Lady of yeah. Light. Okay. Um, what do you think about this CGI art that they released just a few days ago? It's not very apparent from this from the fraction of it that you've shown us here. Mm. She looks very tall. She, she does, does look, look very tall. tall but yes. she's maybe it's in this... an ancient form. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it reminds me of like something you'd see in like mist or something like that era of like 3d games where it was like i kind of get what you mean i guess do you, do, it are, doesn't look is the cg the pro like the the yeah it's yeah. the it's the face and skin i think like the the outfit's mm. realistic enough the cloth physics look good i think it's the yeah. face and i don't yeah. know her hair Looks it looks like a wig. Forwards. Yeah, I think. It, yeah, it looks like a cheap like party city wig. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> the, I don't like it. The, the thing I think I find most strange about it is it's the perspective because you're kind of looking up at her, assumedly yeah. from like a regular warrior of lights like perspective. Yeah. But because of the way that her dro- like her robes taper off, it makes her look very pyramidal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's a weird. I think it's a bit of a mess. Yeah. It looks. Yeah. It looks dated. It's what? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what it's really. What's the point any, mm, anymore? Maybe anyway. and I were discussing this before this the podcast. Like, why release it now? Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a bit late to hype it up and it just feels like a lost piece of cg art what they found and were like oh yeah what can we what can we put out yeah it doesn't really feel any more or less spoilery if they were to release it earlier right no right uh yes so there you go that's uh that's some new art that was posted on their i believe twitter uh so um yes you can go see watch or find the whole thing there so that's on the official 14 twitter we won another award. This one is apparently like a pretty big deal. The Dice uh, Awards. Mm-hmm. Um, we won for Best RPG of the Year. Mm-hmm. Where, so this is so interesting because before um, the big, like before Endwalker and before like uh, the big surge of players and the popularity spiked, we would only ever be nominated for like sh- like categories that were like lesser. Do you know what I mean? Like the still yeah. playing, mm-hmm. ongoing yeah. game. And we yeah. were never even considered for stuff like this. Look at us now, role playing game of the year. Mm. Mm-hmm. I mean, what a what a transformation. Um, yeah, with uh, we won the one dice award. Um, but if there's anything else to say, we've won. <laughs> but the game has won you... so many awards now. So, I understand that you're happy about winning Best RPG of the Year. Yes. There was another category that we did lose. We lost Online Game of the Year. Who do you think we lost it to? Oh, no. I don't know. Oh, I hope I... it's Fortnite. It can't be Fortnite. Fortnite's, like, in rapid decline. Well, it's not from that year, anyway. No. Is it? F- we lost. You can't. Lo- have- okay, don't. Go. No, we didn't lose uh, Fortnite. It wasn't even nominated. No, we lost to Halo Infinite. To be fair, Halo Infinite was big hype for the multiplayer as like a return to form, but it's that's still weird to me. Hmm. Because I think Halo's multiplayer was fine, but I they had so many bad systems like the horrible battle pass and. These weird events and all the microtransactions—they kind of ruined it already. Yeah. Interesting. 
Well, we were nominated, a... though. Mm. We were nominated. Yeah, saying that we lost is a bit in an award show. Is mm-hmm. we we didn't win. I think is better to say. <laughs> it's just a weird. Um, it, I phrase it that way just because I think it's a weird game to lose to. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. Um. Yep. So there you go. Congratulations, everyone. Uh, we uh got at least one award from what is. Mm-hmm. I feel like I see this with everything, but apparently this one has like a real academy. Like this is an academy award, if you will. Um, mm. They call it the the Oscars of the video game world. Um, mm. All right, that is uh, recent events. Let's jump into some. Uh, no, it's not. There's one more thing. But wait, there's more. Yes, you're right. Sorry, <laughs> there was no uh, space between those. Um, yes, there's a new crafting and gathering guide. Sorry, there is more. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, there's a new crafting and gathering guide, or there are multiple, there are crafting and gathering guides now available yeah, so on the Lodestone. They work in the same way as the job guides, <clears throat> so there's not really that much functional difference between looking at all the various crafters on this one guide. Mm-hmm. No, That's they all, true. They're... They all work the same now. They just have different pictures for their synthesis and touch actions. And yeah, stuff. but it's probably mm-hmm. it's it's nice for people that you maybe haven't touched crafting before to get. It's some... not okay. It doesn't tell you how to craft <laughs> in I any knew way. Lily was upset about this. If you're going, the the one thing about crafting in this game that's hard is actually knowing what the hell to do. Mm-hmm. That's the one thing they don't talk about. They just show a list of actions. That means nothing. I I don't think this is as good as the job one because I don't think I don't think it's valuable. Hey, they gave us some nice new artwork, Mela. The artwork's yeah. really nice. I just don't for the Look. disciples of the land, maybe so you can see when you're getting your next I don't know what you expect the, end, the website to have, Mela. Like, because how you a craft basic, depends on the recipe. I... No, but as a basic to, you know... Do you want it to, like, have macros? Not macros necessarily, but some sort of, like, a basic overview of the system would be useful. What does you that mean, Les? Like what does that, that mean? Said... This will, pr- like... Well, touch actions will, you know... Like, these actions are going to help increase... The quality, this will, you know, HQ mats will, you know. I think, I think you basic. want something that sort of also goes into the details of what quality and progress are. Yeah, because so I don't think this actually explains those things. Mm. No, the in-game tutorials don't help that much with crafting, and this doesn't. It listing the abilities isn't that helpful, in my opinion, compared to. I mean, even having a few basic macros would be nice. Like this is how you HQ. A grilled cod at level 35. Like, just, you know, why not? I don't know. Oh, I, there I, is, I, no. Yeah. Actually, Mela, if you mm. click on one of them, mm-hmm. thank you, chat, for pointing this out. If you click on any one of these jobs, if you go then go to Disciples of the Hand, it does give a basic explanation of what to do. There you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we do our so you are getting angry do about deep something, research here on Speakers. <laughs> It's. I was a hidden. I didn't notice that button. So that's that's fine. Mela is retracting oh, I know. his I previous said, statement. My statement. <laughs> I love you saying I didn't notice that button. There is a green like text box coming up. That says new players check here for tips on getting started as a disciple of the hand or land. I think well, that should well. be the, the main, the first thing that shows up then. Mm. I don't disagree with you on that. I think that is more important. Yeah, because because people that already craft are not going to check this guide. No. Uh, uh, mm. No. Okay. Well, there you go. Um, yeah, oh, yeah. There, I guess I could. Wow. I, yeah. I agree with the general criticism that it's a bit less clear than it should be. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. This one actually goes into. Jo- it tells you how to join as a, a, join a disciple of the hand. It tells you all mm-hmm. the key features of synthesis. It tells you about Byrogos Blessing and. It even tells you about melding. Making sure to stack it up. How collectible. Okay. No, I, I take it all back. It's actually quite decent. Everything is covered in this guide. 
So yeah. my, my initial that's statement my, is correct. This is a very yeah, good that's guide. That's my fault for not looking into it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all glad right. I didn't take a strong opinion on it. <laughs> yeah. <that. Whew. laughs> um, all right. Uh, but if I didn't, we would never have even found that out. Thank so. God we found it during this, because you would have been ripped apart in the oh, comments. Oh, uh, yeah. So um, there mm -hmm. you go. Uh, that's all right. You can protect me from this. Hopefully those. the keyboard warriors <laughs> watched this far, so they actually heard the wrestle, like the end of this uh, segment. Um, oh, no, no. They, they drafted their they comments. They paused. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um okay, so uh that's that is recent events. Uh, th uh thank you to the recent events. Thank I just you. thanked recent events. All right, moving on. It's time for Mogmail. <laughs> This first one is from Ryuk Shinigami uh, from Moogle. Uh, speakers, I have a theory. Yesterday, uh, yesterday, which I mean, I'm assuming it's just a live yesterday. letter. Uh, Yoshi P said there is significance to moons of the other shards, which each shard its piece uh, of Zodiac. I think they intend to make it for every Final Fantasy franchise, beginning from one till seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on, with Cloud Sephiroth and all that stuff. <laughs> oh my God! Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, oh, I mean, oh shit! I like. <laughs> oh, we don't. We don't have the mog mail slide for some reason. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Yes. Um, I don't think that's true. <laughs> I mean, we've seen we've seen two other shards, and I don't think that's very reflective of them. This is. I mean, this is an oh shh. Oh. Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> mm. uh, yeah. Go yeah. on. Go on. Um yes, uh this is an old this something. is an old yeah, sorry, it's an old theory uh that I remember from like the mm -hmm. from the moment we learned about shards. But when like, we oh. went to the first, although it was very, very, very vaguely It had a vague one, one. theme, yeah. Very, mm -hmm. very vague one theme. <laughs> I don't think they'll continue that. No. I mean you could argue that like the void is based very, very, very vaguely on three. <laughs> yeah. How vague that is. Is it what what Ryuke is wanting is we'll go to the seventh shard and like cloud will be there and Genova will be in a tank. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. There might be an experiment going on that's incredible. like it's very vague. There's like a Genova like themed mm. plot, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. I maybe. But like the first I mean shard wasn't even really a one reference until um, the Warrior of Light appeared. Mm -hmm. No. True. And I mean, we pretty much have like parts of 12 or like warped parts of 12 in our world itself. Yeah. Well, that's true as that's well. That's true. It's uh, like the Durga Mountains, just the, the vague reference. That's it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if we've got like Fran in the 14th or the source or whatever, yeah, then we can't. Really? No, and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, the, is for is are, is the source considered the fourteenth? Because that might give some credence to it. I but... think I think it is considered the fourteenth, but normally we just call it the source. So like, yeah, I think more people would think of it rather than the fourteenth as like the zeroth, right? Yeah, the original yeah. one, yeah. Uh, yeah, so I don't think uh, that's. Uh, I mean, we've got the, the Crystal Tower on ours as well. Yeah, we've got like mm -hmm. we've got too many references on hide on mm. Theris. Yeah, I mean, it would be cool art. if, like, in the same way that the first is very, very, very vaguely based on the Final Fantasy One, if we do end up going to other shards, if they're very, very, very vaguely based on other Final Fantasies, as long as they're their own worlds and their own their own sense of it as well yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm i'm okay with that yeah but 14 is already kind of six seven ish yeah with garlemald yeah mm -hmm. it's um hold on while i, I just click through these yeah, real quick sure. there we go uh yes um i remember the remember van Adeel? remember that theory that was a good oh, theory don't. The we'll never go to the 11th shard hopefully then no, because that oh, would that would have to remake the game so it like plays badly. I mean, <clears throat> the thing is, there's some sort of weird canonical connection between eleven and fourteen, anyway. Because uh, yeah, um, with Iroha. What's that woman called? Yeah, Iroha. Yeah. Yeah, that's her name. And uh, Tenzin. 
Uh, so the oh, there's yeah, yeah, Antonsen. I I kind of still l- l- kind of subscribe a little to that theory that Vanadil is either the ancient past or the very or, or future of. But that pulls Aorcia. Tanaka back into the frame. Uh, we don't want that. <laughs> that's true. Um, well, he didn't make Vanadil. He was the. Mm. I don't remember the role. Director. <laughs> uh, one of them. Uh, anyways, yeah. So um, That I've... is a possibility, though. Imagine if one of the other shards is just Vanadil. Oh, God. With all the, the MSQ, so we don't have to play 11 I mean, to enjoy it. It makes sense. Oh, yeah. Imagine if that's how they remake 11. Yeah. <laughs> that would be very upsetting <laughs> i think i don't know <laughs> uh, it kind of makes sense that man like 11 could be like a shard that would explain why they're so similar and why there's like overlap that would mm-hmm. explain that yeah um yeah that means we can never rejoin everything though no that's true or so, 11 would have to be shut down yeah it doesn't mean that 11 has to be shut down it just means that whenever 11 is set is it occurs before the events of 14 mm-hmm. true mm-hmm. true mm-hmm um yep yeah, so um there you go uh thank you uh ryuk shinigami yeah. um thank you for your exclamation marks. thank you for being so excited <laughs> for such a crackpot theory <laughs> <laughs> uh all right uh next uh mogmel from giltia from sodiark giltia oh, uh, giltia uh oh giant man in the clouds over ilsabard who are you oh giant man in the clouds over ilsabard why were you not the giant of babel O oh, giant man in the clouds over Ilsabard, when will we meet? O oh, giant man in the clouds over Ilsabard, will you take the clouds away with you when you leave? <laughs> o oh, giant man in the clouds over Ilsabard, give me that fucking lore! <laughs> A poem by Giltia, 1577. It's beautiful. I wish she was um, talked about. Explained. Yeah. You can't just put that on the map. Because I, the moment I heard that the the dungeon was called, you know, the Tower of Babel, it's like mm-hmm. that's the giant, surely. Mm-hmm. Um, no, no, um, he's just out there roaming. <sighs> yeah, where is he? They promised Who us that he? he would be a thing. He, he could just be a legend. I mean, but why he, he we probably is a it? thing. But like, that's probably why he's on the map. That might be like a Why haven't we heard story. about it? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Why haven't we heard about it? I mean, Garlem Old and the Garlians haven't been that open about it, uh, ex- like providing us with their lore and their no. their legends. I think, I mean, I think we, like, because things have changed, like, or things are going to change with 6.1, the way we get trials is probably going to be very different now. It's pro- Maybe it won't mm-hmm. even be like a series anymore, depending That's on how true. disconnected like each patch is, like in terms of story. So um, maybe, yeah, the Giant of Babel might just be like part of a patch, like a patch story. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it's also a whale flying through the sky. Yes. Mm-hmm. I don't want to fight another That's whale. That's a whale, Mela. Yeah. I, I Do don't think. think... <sighs> no, I don't think so. Don't want to but I don't think, fight a whale. I think the whale is going to be less explained <clears> just <throat> simply because I don't think they've ever been asked about it and they've never said that they wanted to explain it. Mm-hmm. That's true. But then on the other hand, the burn had the cool worm and well, that was ruined. The re- he's dead. The reason, or shed his skin or whatever. The reason we talk about the, the giant is because he's been specifically pointed out as something that we true. will deal with later. He is not mm-hmm. just decoration. Mm-hmm. Uh, or maybe they just... The worm is- guessed that they would do that one day and then they just decided not to. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. The worm in the burn, the worm still ex- the giant worm still exists mainly. We just never yeah. saw the he ones just that were as skin. big yeah. as that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, will he take the, yeah, the clouds? Do we, oh, do you think one, please it, soon. I don't think we will until we get a Corvos and that might be no, 7.0. No, maybe 7.0, yeah. Um, mm. No, I think I think if they would have done it this expansion, they would have done it at the start. I don't think we're yeah. seeing the rest of Othar, not Othar, sorry, Ilsabad until at least 7.0. Or well, like they might do a little the, bit of a tease. Pre release stuff. They might do a little bit of a tease like they did with um, uh, the Dalmasca stuff. 
where they they mm. kind of show it in game, but oh, we don't yeah. get an official release. Yeah. Um, as, but like especially like probably like at the end where we're like setting up to go to Corvos, they'd be like, "Oh, here's the map." Yeah. Uh, and you you bet we're gonna spend a whole episode just talking about that map <laughs> whenever they do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so um, yeah, we I don't know. Didn't think yeah, they would make as they would make a continent that has less zones than Othard at three, and yet they did it. Yes, yes, they did. <laughs> oh, stop it! <laughs> a continent with one zone. Yeah, yeah. Embarrassing. Oof um okay that's it um we don't know about the giant man i i bet you we will know more in one of the f patches for 6.x so yeah please look forward to it all right uh one more mog mail for the road by coach beer from adamantois after teased uh, after teasing a few different unfinished story points during the live letter q a do you believe any of the Hydland zodiac arc <clears throat> will bleed into any post 7.0 plot points or do you think the 6.x main scenario raid scenarios will mostly tie up any loose ends we have regarding the story so far thanks for reading and love the show thank you coach beer um the only thing that i think really has a chance to come up is the weird thing they teased about the moons being important yeah yeah, yeah. i think yeah. everything bring else it up. will be tied up in the raid series mm -hmm. yeah i Possibly. think they want to leave it all in the past now uh, mm -hmm. If there's a loose end, they probably won't tie it. Yeah, they they've, mm -hmm. yeah, I think so. Uh, I think maybe, like we know that they've spread out. There are Asians alive. They have some convenient right. things still around for late to pick up. They haven't. I don't. I think it would be a bad idea to to completely lock it down because that's mm -hmm. content that they may never access again. So they've done that with the Asians. They mentioned the moons. Um, so. That stuff. Maybe might when come the back. game starts dying, they'll be like the return yeah. of the Asians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. like, Whoa, remember them? Yeah. I mean, it, there's all this. Well, stuff... we won't remember them because we'll <laughs> well... be so old by then. <laughs> <laughs> there's all this stuff with Gaius. You know, Gaius was the Asian yeah. hunter or whatever. So he, there's all this story with him that can potentially be told. So, yeah, I think there's going to be a little bit Asian stuff. I think we're still going to deal with in the future. Mm -hmm. But the rest of the story, I think, is mostly tied up. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, that's our thoughts on that. Thank you for sending in Mog Mail. Thank you, Coach Beer. Uh, thank you, uh, Giltia and Ryuk Sh uh, Shinigami. Remember, you can send us Mog Mail at speakersexavia.com slash Mog Mail, uh, and we will read them the show. Well, tomorrow, uh, next week, we will be covering another live letter. So um, we may not be reading Mog Mail next week, um, but... Uh, you should send if you've watched the live letter or our coverage of it. We will cover it, of course. Um, mm -hmm. You can send us mug mail uh, about that live letter, uh, and we will read it the following week, and we'll hear your thoughts and we'll discuss it. All right, speakers of video.com slash mug mail uh, to send us mug mail. Now on to the main story. We have three different interviews. I think you pulled these pictures from different interviews. No. <laughs> No, this is what this is. Uh, this is from the interview. Uh, this is okay. <laughs> VG twenty four sevens uh, big Final Fantasy fourteen Endwalker interview with Yoshi P uh, and Ishikawa, um, where they reflect and look ahead. Okay, um, we can just jump into the questions. Actually, so what moments from Endwalker are you personally most proud of? Yoshida says, It's quite difficult to pick a certain scene in particular, but if I had to, I would say that the one where the Warrior of Light parts way with Vena, uh, now as Hydaelyn. Uh, sorry, why did I read that in such a weird way? I would say the one where the Warrior of Light parts ways with Vena, now as Hydaelyn. Even more so than the theatrical performance uh, of the characters, I was very particular about the modeling of Hydaelyn and environment settings. I took great pains to ensure Mr. Romano's artwork was perfect, perfectly recreated, while at the same time attempting to make it so that the player identifies themselves with the life that Vena led. I hope we were able to convey her thoughts to the players. I think that is one of the best scenes in Endwalker. Mm. Yeah. The, the point at which you say goodbye to Vena. Yes. And it's probably yeah. more touching to now that we know that like she completely obliterated her ether after yes. that fight. True. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
was good. Yeah. Uh, Ishikawa says it's very difficult to choose, but the first scene that came to mind was when we bring forth the flowers in front of Meteon in Ultima Thule, and then the scene where we talk with her in the end. I think it's precisely because we went through a process of building on what we established in Final Fantasy XIV that the thing that the things that happen and the words exchanged in, exchange in these scenes are so valuable. At the very edge of the universe, Meteon says to the adventurer, Thank you for guiding me here. To find these words at journey's end fills me with joy. I share her sentiment. Now I'm curious to hear what you two have to say about this scene. Um, <sighs> it's it's fine. From an in expansion, if you ignore the pop-up villain aspect, <laughs> the fact that you were able to make her long journey worthwhile or change her opinion somewhat of the endless depths of what's the point yeah from everyone else she met yeah that's nice yeah yeah it's a nice scene it's i just uh, it's hard to like introduce a character like in the first like in the ex like this was a, a character that was Halfway introduced through. yeah and then you're supposed mm. to like it's hard build to relate this. to her yeah yeah um so no it's a good scene i understand what she means and of course she yeah. has a stronger connection to meteon because she wrote this story so yeah to her, this obviously kind of thing. um but not a bad scene i would i would agree more with uh yoshida here though that one to me because that's the opposite right heidel is someone we've yes. had since the beginning exactly so, yeah um okay uh, there were quite a few very intimate, personal moments throughout Endwalker, such as speaking with Hermes and showing him he's not alone in his despair, and Uriange finally facing Monbrida's parents. Uh, what oh. went into writing those moments, and why is it important to have these smaller moments within a story of such epic scale? Smaller moments. The Moonbreeder scene was the highlight of the expansion for me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and again... That's a story that we have a lot of connection to. Like that's mm -hmm. an old thing. Um, even though, I mean, we used to criticize Mon Brida because she was kind of like a, a pop up character, but she did live for like two ex two patches, or was it three? I don't remember exactly how it was, long. It's two patches. Two patches. Yeah. Um, but she was incorporated into the lore afterwards, and they kept talking about her and yeah. bringing up what she did beforehand. And they added her parents, which added to it. It gave depth to Uriange, mm -hmm. which we hadn't seen yeah. before. Yeah, it brought it. Yeah, his character really came out in the last two expansions. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, uh, Yoshida says the scene where Uriange meets Mon Brida's parents one once more was one that I asked Ishikawa to address when we were working on the plot. With the group heading to Old Charlian, I asked her to somehow complete the only loose thread that was left hanging in Uriange's story so far. Final Fantasy XIV's story is not only the story of the players, the Warrior of Light, Warriors of Light, but also that of the Scions of the Seventh Dawn, who support them on their journey. When I took over the reins of the original XIV, Oriange was close to the first new character we created. So I guess you could say I al also have a strong emotional attachment to him. Laughs. The main character in XIV is you as the player, so basically the player's character doesn't talk in the game. <laughs> Instead, the Scions speak their thoughts, and that in turn creates a position for the Warrior of Light at the center of it all. That's why it's so important to portray their, their stories carefully in order to portray the Warriors of Light. That is true. Um, <clears throat> what, so Uriange was one of the first characters that Yoshi P yes. was directly involved with the creation of. Think Can you think of any other before. characters that like he might have that attachment to that were like introduced in 1.1 1 .1 or... I mean, there's, the I mean, there's Louis Soir, but he's obviously finished that chapter. Um, was Louis Soir not in 1.0? He was in, well, he was in 1.0, but Yoshida made him, right? He was part of the uh, 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 Living on a Prayer quest line for the end of 14. Uh, so that would be his team that made Louis Soir. There was no Louis Soir quest before then. Um, who else did he, like, make... Uh, I think he made Kun a Senna. Mm. Because, yeah, because it was she the, was not in charge. Was, she came later. Um, it was the Kundra's Guild later before that. Yeah. she may, Maybe she was mentioned. Yeah, go on. Who was the Kundra's Guild later in 1.0? Uh, 
um, the the little man. Ah, Rune, whatever he's called. Yeah, the guy who was in charge of Gridania was also the leader of the Conjurer's oh, Guild. Oh, okay, so, so he, he was, did both. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Isumi, yeah. That's uh, his name. Yeah, he... Kane-san is not a... You wouldn't put her on your CV. <sighs> she... I, I think she has an interesting story, but she... It, it's just that she's so Which boring. only comes out in a, the role quests, really. Yeah. But she, but you also kind of understand that she has a bit of a story. If you've played 1.0, her story there is kind of explained a little there because we yeah. we bring her to the yeah. twelves, like to Gridani and stuff. There's there's a whole quest line, but um, yeah, she's kind of boring. <laughs> uh, well, I think I think Louis Wise, Louis Swat, like, and that's the interesting thing now that we know now that we have confirmed that Urianje was Yoshi P's creation. Those were they were together, like those two were like this, you know. Two peas in a pod. Mm -hmm. Orianje and Luis Suarez were often true. together in 1.0's quest lines. It's not. It's hard to say he did such a great job of Orianje early on. He's a, a bit of a mess in the Realm of Um <laughs> Yeah. And for a while, not even a mess. I would just say he doesn't have a character at the start yeah. of Realm Reborn. Right. He's he's just the man who talks like Shakespeare. For the yeah. Ages, and he he's involved mm. very slightly in like the extremes i wonder if that's because he lost the dynamic with louis swa and they didn't quite understand like how to like bring him mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. into the group because louis swa is like you know an old scholar man and they kind of vibed <laughs> together and mm -hmm. when he was yeah. gone there was that was lost um yeah I but feel i feel like yeah. they didn't cap yeah they should have capitalized earlier on the bond between orange and the twins which they don't really touch upon until right. blood, i'd say yeah true yeah true um, okay, um, Ishikawa says, um, at the end of the day, no matter how grand a certain history might be, it is the individual lives of the people that form those threads of history. Those who live in the same era should be able to see parts of a story that may be watered down or cut altogether when the history of that place or time is compiled in later generations. Take Hermes, for example. He would probably be recorded in history as the one who made a big mistake, but there was a moment where he struggled about what he should do and smiled as he shared his pain with you. Another example would be when Orianje from The Science of the Seventh Dawn cries when receiving a hug from the mother of his close friend. I believe that encountering such events and coming into contact... Oh no. And coming into contact with, uh, <laughs> uh, with each of the lives that make up that history is what it means to live in that world. Mm-hmm. It's an interesting uh, perspective that you don't often think about how the history books refer to people and how they were probably going through quite a lot of emotional turmoil at the moment. They're only remembered for a single decision. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, okay. That's one moment in Thavnir that almost broke me. The one with Matsya and the baby. They bring this up so much. Uh, that almost goes horribly wrong and lasts just long enough to doubt yourself. What went into balancing that moment and making it so agonizing? Oh my god. <laughs> what a what a start to this answer from Ishikawa. I often have nightmares <laughs> when I sleep. Uh, or Ishikawa. Someone cuddle her. <laughs> <laughs> they can be surprisingly thought provoking and inspirational. For example, let's see. Yes, there was an evil spirit in a building and it's hunting down people. I'm hiding in a windowless <laughs> room. Jesus Christ, I'm desperately hoping don't find me, but the thought that sooner or later I'll be found in this spot keeps nagging at me. Being in a dream is essentially delving into your mind, so once you realize that possibility uh, of something bad happening, you're done for. No matter how much I might scream, don't come, the evil spirit will find me and I'll get a bad ending. <laughs> so it was these experiences from my daily nightmares. Really? <laughs> Jesus, you need to see someone. Uh... <laughs> that I attempted to use in the dialogue and direction of that scene. Although my endings are usually bad, I always thought about having Matsya get rescued by Vritra and Astinian. She, like, dies every night in her dreams from the evil buildings. For it. The trouble is, if she gets help, yeah. maybe the writing will suffer, so she, she needs to suffer for the art. True. Well, she's like a, a, a Van Gogh of the modern era. <laughs> yes. Dream uh, interpretation to this day remains uh, a pseudoscience. There is very little true. connection yeah. people have been able to accurately draw between emotional state and dreams. So true. maybe true. she's just very unlucky. Yeah, she just enjoys her daily nightmares. 
At least they inspire mm. her. But something, she can get something, from them. something that uh, really works is eating a lot of cheese before you go to bed. Is it actually? Yeah. For you making should, you, re- you get weird well, dreams. Actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, I've eat, heard that, but I've never eat like... cheese. Dream weird, but you have How to much eat like. Cheese? I think you need to eat yeah. like speci- like you can't just have. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you just eat uh, just eat cheese. I don't know how much okay. you need to eat. I, I eat a whole. If block. I ha- so like a fun, if I have a fondue tub to myself with some yeah. bread, that's enough. I don't know if it can be melted. I don't know if that changes. Maybe well, it needs like, to be specific cheese. There's something as well. about the chem, yeah, the chemical composition of cheese uh, when it like goes into your stomach that fucks up your dreams. Yeah. I once had That's a cheese bad, board yeah. before I went to bed, and I had some interesting dreams. Oh, uh, that sounds fun. Yeah. <laughs> it's such a. I mean, it's such a to myself. thing to say. No, not to myself. I wouldn't. I wouldn't say an entire cheese board <laughs> before bedtime. I, you know, I. I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna have. <laughs> You're gonna eat cheese. I'm gonna bed. have a cheese board to myself and see how that works. That's my <laughs> oh dream my now. I'm just. <laughs> how many cheeses do you have? Well, right none there. right now. Well, I have like two, but I need more. You can I buy like a specific cheese board. Cheese. Like brown cheese doesn't count. No, that never counts. I will never have no. that. You will never. It's have gotta be cheese. like proper dairy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But I, yeah, I'm gonna get a lot of cheese and eat a cheese board. How interesting. Anyways, but. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the interview. Uh, Emmett Selk was such a standout character and tragic villain during Shadowbringers. How did it feel to be able to touch on his more formative years and character in Elpis? What do you think uh, it is about him that resonates so well with players? Ishikawa says, It was not only when writing the story, but also when giving directions for the voice acting and theatrical performance. I paid a particular attention toward making sure that the Emmett Selk we meet in Elpis is the man he was originally originally before living a long life in the Sundered world. He's still very hard-headed and driven to fulfill his role, but his perseverance is s- sincere and you get a glimpse of his kindness, something that eventually leads to his own downfall. I think it's that multifaceted aspect of his personality which makes him feel truly human and is one reason why he is loved by the fans. Mm. Yeah, he Pretty feels more human than most characters in the game, to be honest. Yeah. Most of them are just like yeah. instantly willing to help you and love you and whatever, whereas he actually feels mm-hmm. like a he works there, lives there, does, yeah. you know, he's got a job to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, pre- before the Sundering, Emmett Selk was much less uh, theatrical than he is in the modern world. Oh, era. yes. Oh, yeah. well, that's thousands of years of going mad, Yeah, I guess. Essentially, mm-hmm. yeah. He's probably he probably misses the chaos of his friends. Yeah, true. Yeah. yeah, he might be trying to emulate them in some way. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, the moment where you make the final climb up in Ultima Thule and the lyrics kick in is such oh. a point, uh, poignant moment filled with sorrow and hope. How did that all come together? Was the scene written with the lyrics in mind? Ishikawa says, First and foremost, I thought about delivering the same experience as when we first reached Amarot in Shadowbringers, using another method. Having considered how the story would unfold, and including the aforementioned aim, I decided to use a structure like the one that was implemented in the end. The song starts to take clearer form as the player's path is built, and eventually, the song takes off with the lyrics. However, what I had in mind at the time was a chorus, something which would be sung by a choir, in response, our composer Soken suggested that we incorporate vocals by Jason Charles Miller as the main part of the song. I instantly thought, what an amazing idea, and with that, I set about writing a draft of the lyrics. In short, we produced the music and story with an aim to generate synergy between those two mediums. I like to think that was, like, he wasn't involved in the game yet, and Soken was like, what about James Charles yeah. Miller. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, yeah, yeah good idea. She could, yeah. Jason Charles yeah, Miller. Jason yeah, Jason Charles Miller, yeah. I mean, he's not involved. I think that's the only song he's involved with in, in Endwalker. It must yeah. have, like, been... Had it on the table, though. It was such an odd thing to do. Yeah, but it worked. Maybe they're friends. Outside, I, mean, I don't know. Yeah, it is random. Possibly, yeah. It feels a little random. Oh, he did the Shadowbringer song. Yes, that's he right. Did, he does uh, do the Shadowbringer song, yes, but what yeah. I was saying, he wasn't involved with Endwalker at all. Right, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. Um, how did you feel about having to make the decision to pa- uh, pause sales of the starter edition so soon after release? Will you potentially pause them again if congestion soars again? 
Uh, I mean, this is the second time. I feel like it's very annoying that people don't know that. <laughs> this is like the second time Fortina's paused sales. They did it for mm -hmm. Realm Reborn, and they did it for Endwalker. No. no one cared in a Realm Reborn. No one was playing in a Realm Reborn. Yeah. This is That's the why they count. paused sales, because there were so many people playing. Um, <laughs> Yoshida says, The huge levels of congestion was what prompted the decision. So more than anything, I felt incredibly sorry towards our current 14 players. The honest truth is that it was tough for us because we never thought that our 11 years of hard work to, uh, to expand our user base could cause us to <laughs> suffer in this way. However... <laughs> Since Final Fantasy XIV <laughs> is there for all the players who have supported and played the game up until now, I, I would probably make that call again to suspend the sales if we see signs of heavy congestion once more. After all, my priorities remain the same. All of our players come first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's done Thank it before, you. so he will do it again. He, this is not the first time. Yeah. yeah. It's easy for us to say that's the correct decision because we're the players that he's yeah. making the decision on behalf of. But... Yeah. I think they're the making enough money. Decision. Yeah, 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 yeah. You'd rather continue making a good amount of money than get some backlash for. Well, that's mm -hmm. sudden cues. That's also the advantage of this being an MMO. Like halting sales does not mean that their income stops because people well, still that, yeah. pay for the game through subs. So yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, speaking of that, we haven't actually mentioned this, but the free trial has resumed. Um, it resumed last week, so. I'm putting mm -hmm. the just saying this in the middle of like an interview block where <laughs> no one will find it unless they actually For listen to the interview. I, yeah, I must have imagined it. I thought we I thought we'd mentioned it last week, but I guess we. Probably I, think, didn't. I don't think we did. Uh, well, they, to be fair, they should be listening to everything yeah, in depth. That's true, but full attention. Yeah, true. Okay. Well, now you know. Now you know. Uh, okay, uh, Endwalker is. Oh, we did mention it was in the live letter. Don't confuse us. Don't confuse. Don't read chat because chat doesn't know. Endwalker is huge. <laughs> covers so much story. Not to mention, it was made through a challenging pandemic. Did anything have to be cut out? And if so, what sort of things were cut? Uh, Yoshida says, indeed, there was a big impact from the pandemic, and compared to previous expansions, the work to round off development and improve the quality was more difficult this time around. However, there was nothing in particular that we, we needed to cut from our original plans, with the data center travel system being the only thing we had to postpone due to the server congestion. In fact, the whole team worked so hard to surpass the volume we had originally intended to implement, and Endwalker turned out to be a bigger expansion than initially planned. Having said that, this time, we took special measures to conclude the first major saga. I don't think we'd be able to pull it uh, pull it off if the players expect this for every expansion. Smiles bitterly. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, to know how these are annotated, like, is is if if this is an in person interview, yeah, does the interviewer look closely? Yoshi P's face. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Isn't observe it? that that is a that bitter in. smile. Yeah. Or if it's an email one, does Yoshi P go like, "I, I smile bitterly." Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, moving we, on. Yes. Have Have we seen them? Sh we haven't seen any like visuals of the data center travel system yet, have we? No. 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 We only no. the only thing we really know is that you have to. Like, you can't be logged in to travel. Yeah. You have to do it mm -hmm. from the character screen. But, yeah. Wow. Um, Look forward to the one-hour presentation about that next week. Oh, no. Oh, no. Uh... Oh, no! <laughs> okay. Well, that's for next week. Uh, unlike in previous expansions where the story has continued with patches, Endwalker has a conclusion. Will future patch releases continue to follow a similar uh, pattern to previous expansions, or will the content type and amount, etc., and pandemic change to reflect this? Uh, Yoshida says... This is an interesting question. Yoshida says, The pace and progress of the story will remain basically the same, so players need not worry about this. However, the content of the major patch updates... Uh, has been scaling up with each successive expansion, and as such, I intend to include some workflow changes in relation to their content and cycles. We are also working on new systems and unannounced new content, which we intend to reveal players. Okay, so we uh, to reveal to players in the future as part of our mid to long term plans. Your patience would be appreciated. Okay, mm -hmm. well there you go. We already kind of knew that. Uh, well, this interview was 
this interview was actually before made before the last live letter so yeah we now know what those things are yes only vaguely though yes yeah that's true um, so that is the VG 24-7 interview with uh, Ishikawa and Yoshi P. Now, uh, Ishikawa will stay. Yoshi P will step away uh, as we make way for Soken and Ishikawa in this Famitsu <laughs> interview. Um, so, um, this... This is uh, translated by someone on Reddit. This is from the subreddit. Uh, translated by... Let's give them credit. Um M. Killaby. There you go. Um, Thanks, McKillaby. Thanks, McKillaby. Uh, all right. Interviewer. When did production on Endwalker... Okay, so, sorry. The, the interview uh, is about the music of Endwalker, the meaning of Endwalker's theme songs, uh, Heidelin's perfectionist VA, and an unusually heavy workload for 6.1. So, interviewer. When did production on Endwalker's soundtrack start? Ishikawa says, the first music made for Endwalker was the... Uh, the theme song used in a trailer by Image Studio Division, uh, formerly Visual Works. Um, at that stage, the story setting and contents had roughly been decided, but visual materials weren't ready yet, so just the general ideas were communicated to Sokensan, uh, who, who is... Uh, oh, yeah, Koji question. Fox and the others, and they began working on the music. That was around the time of patch 5.3, August 2020. Mm-hmm. Um, Soken says we discussed the basic point of whether the song should be orchestral or rock this time we went for rock Ishikawa says to the very end we wanted to bring out 14's roughness she says and laughs um, Soken says I was thinking along the lines of Shadowbringers had a rock theme song how about orchestral this time but the sample music we sent along was hard rock I listened to it and thought is this okay for the finale? Um, laughs. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it works. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't mind a return to an orchestral like theme for the next expansion. Yeah, because now we've done this. Like it, It's mm. like, we've done the rock, and it's cool, and it's... Uh, we go back to like a very fantasy yeah. classic sound, I think. Yeah. It would be nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I do appreciate the variety. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Uh, The interviewer says, more so than a grand finale, did it give the impression of pressing forward in high spirits? Ishikawa says, the final scene of the adventure and Sinos punch up. I thought it would be good to have a song you can energetically beat each other up. (laughs) So you can energetic... Hold on. So you can energetically beat each other up. I wasn't ready for that sentence. Mm. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, so this song was planned for that scene from the start. Ishikawa says, right. Also, after this, when we put to, uh, put it together with the trailer, Soken-san said, why don't we use the melodies of all the other expansions? And we thought that'd be a great idea. Those two things feel like they were decided first about the theme song. And Soken adds, uh, but when I started making the song, it was so long and I had a hard time with it, laughs Ishikawa, because the trailer was seven minutes long, right? Yeah, you have to, yeah. Uh, The interviewer says, when did you start work on the rest of the music? Ishikawa says, around patch 5.5. I made a list of tracks we needed and sent it over to Soken-san. Soken says, I'd tell Ishikawa, I'll give you everything you want. But it was really merciless, laughs. So we'd have conversations like, can this be compressed? Ishikawa says, at that point, it was decided Ultima Thule would have three songs. 5.5. 5.5. Seems yeah. quite late, but I guess... It does seem quite late, but then again, that <clears throat> was... That did start in, like... March? February? Around yeah, it was, a, it was a yeah. long time between the end and the... Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, the interactions between the scenario side and music side were so close this time. Soken says, it was quite close to the time compared to before, I think. Ishikawa says, especially since Shadowbringers, it's inevitable that in a title that has gone on for as long as this, the impact of one song will fade over time. But as far as possible, I thought, I want to use the music from Sokensan's team, give them meaning, and make sure they leave an impression. We collaborated quite a bit to ensure that the music would have meaning and be used effectively in the story. 
Sokin says, in addition to the increase in the number of songs, in truth, I'm actually against the idea that music should play anywhere and at all times. That said, in 14, in quests, for example, it would feel lonely without music. So that's why the current design of music always playing is the way it is. But still, the number of songs shouldn't just be increased uh, as if they're abundant. We were awarded most original songs in a video game by Guinness World Records, but I'm not increasing it because I want because I want to. Bitter laugh. <laughs> the 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 so, idea of like not having music playing, you can really tell that that's a thing in uh, any A Realm Reborn zone. Uh, where, I was thinking the exact same thing. <laughs> uh, and the A Realm Reborn dungeons, uh, where you have like. A 10 second song and then silence until you pick it's up a very moment. bad in dungeons but in the shroud i actually like it without the it music is atmospheric it is nice yeah yeah um, one of, it's the only zones i think though mm. yeah yeah um it's okay. also particularly noticeable i think in zones from stormblood onwards that they don't the songs aren't designed to loop like mm, exactly right. they actually fade to silence and then give you a period of that before they yeah. start again yes. whereas in heavensward they actually i believe all of them loop perfectly yes mm -hmm. yeah uh okay so uh, uh, interviewer continues player might simply think more music is better but stoken says like ishikawa said we have to make it so that the music has meaning these things are inseparable human memory is limited Tell me about it. So if you create something new, memories of the old will fade, and that's okay. But since this time the story considered con uh, considered concluding the Warrior Flight's adventure up to now to be very important, I thought it wasn't good to put all sorts of new things in there. Uh, yeah. Mean, I understand what he's saying, but I'll always appreciate there being more music than less. Yeah. <sighs> Yeah. I mean, I understand that it just makes more work for him as yes. well. But, like, the music in 14 is one of my favorite parts of the game. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I like it when he takes, like, old songs and then re sort of remakes them so you can sort of recognize them still, but mm -hmm. they evolved. Mm -hmm. that's, that's cool. Um, okay. Ishikawa-san, was it your request to make use of music from Final Fantasy IV and Final Fantasy V? Ishikawa says, that's right. We made Mari Lamentorum from concepts from Final Fantasy IV, including the Loperets, uh, which are based on Hummingway. As a present to people looking forward to the Final Fantasy IV elements, we used the Final Fantasy IV battle music for the Best Way Burrows battle theme. The Final Fantasy IV town music has a positive feel to it, very similar to the atmosphere the Loperets wants to give off, so I thought it synergized well. The song that plays in the Baldessian Annex... <sighs> Someday I'm certain, certain is the song used in an impactful scene with Kryle and Galuf in Final Fantasy V. The title overlaps with Final Fantasy XIV, Kryle's mental state. There you go. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go, it's nice. There is, yeah. I mean, it makes sense. It does, it does. Mm -hmm. um, what song in Endwalker do you think leaves the deepest impression? Ishikawa says, Flow. I felt... That my ideas, Soken Sans finished concept, and Amanda uh, Aiken, uh, Aiken's vocals join together beautifully. No matter how many games I make from here on, I think this will always be a special song to me. I mean, it's very symbolic <clears throat> of the conclusion of the Heidelin and Zodiac storyline. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's good. Um, at the start of what specific? At the start, what specifications did you give to Soken San? Ishikawa says, to put it simply, a song like you're sinking on the into the ocean. A song that warmly praises life that has persevered to the end. Like Meteon's line near the end, until the time death becomes your kind, gentle neighbor. I requested a song that gently accepts death and the end. Wow. Jesus. Uh, are you all right, Ishikawa? Are you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. The nightmares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is, it is Heidelin accepting her end. True. true. And it makes me wonder, are we going to get in, are we just not going to get any songs from Heidelin's perspective anymore? Probably shouldn't, eh? No, she's gone. Unless she can, like, symbolically watch on and be like, oh, yeah, good job. Well, everyone. the thing is, they specifically said that she's completely gone, so it, it would true. be very symbolic. 
Well, maybe it's like from her past. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Can, yeah. Um, okay, so the song was difficult to sing, even for Amanda. She has a background in uh, jazz and gospel. Uh, Sokin says, she said, this song is super hard, laughs. One reason was, the melody isn't one you can easily put emotions into. Another reason was the lyrics. They struck a chord with Amanda. She was overwhelmed with emotions and started crying, so, sh so she couldn't sing. Uh, Ishikawa says, I wrote the lyrics originally and requested uh, English localization lead Catherine... That's a, a Welsh name. How do I say that, Mela? Um... It's uh, Quinar. Qu oh, so it's just it's just Quinar. Okay. I don't know. <laughs> Qu it's C W Y N A R. Uh, to translate yeah, uh, this is Quinar. This Quinar. is Kate. The yeah. trans the, oh, it's just Kate. Yeah, this is Kate, the translator oh. we saw from the most recent live letter. Oh, she's Quinar. Welsh. The more you know. Uh, to translate them into oh, she English. Has a Welsh ancestry. Well, she has yeah, whatever. Yeah. Quinar pronunciation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Sokin says now you mention it the purchase order from Ishikawa said please ensure the song gives the impression of gently pushing you forward Ishikawa says by the way the credits take 40 minutes if you watch it all without skipping uh, skipping flow together sorry what if you watch it all without skipping flow together will play over the scene of the warrior of light and the scions walking past the ancients Sokin yeah, but if you skip it kill. it ends with an old da song laughs Yes, it does. <laughs> so, there you go. Um, it's weird. I thought it was quite strange, the songs that they chose for the credits outside of, like, the ones that were specifically written for Ann Walker. They picked some random songs from, like, the, the, the game as a whole. Yeah. Bringing back those special memories for you, Gorky. Those special old darn mm. memories. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't start an old darn. <laughs> no. Um... Okay, about the main theme, Endwalker. Was this also written in Japanese and then translated into English? Ishikawa says, There are two patterns when making the English lyrics. One is translated exactly like this, sticking close to the Japanese, and a more rough instruction, this is what we want expressed in this section. For the song Endwalker, Koji uh, wrote the English lyrics. I'm familiar, I'm familiar with him, so I made a relatively rough outline. Uh, when Koji Fox lyrics were complete... Over here, we'd check it, and we'd add a Japanese translation under it. That's how the process went. Of course, there are times uh, we ask for lyrics to be translated directly to English, but for the theme songs, we often proceed in collaboration with Koji Fox. That's, That's good. Interesting. <clears throat> yeah. It's good sometimes for them writing it into English first. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... You can yeah. D direct translations will often be like a little awkward. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, how do you translate autumn tide? Right, <laughs> it's right. not a real word. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, what idea do you have for the theme song Endwalker? Ishikawa says a song that goes one step further than the prior theme songs. If flow is gently pushing you forward, Endwalker is more like a shove. Of the new melody, the part where it plays over old Charlian in the trailer. Without any other info, if you look at the lyrics, you might think, is this from Shadowbringers? But if you listen to it together with Flo, which has the same melody, it becomes the song Meteon sang at the end, of, at the end pouring down as rain, soaring high as wind, a song of hope. Near the end of the song Endwalker, you can hear another mm. melody behind the main melody. That's the outro of Close in the Distance. So even if it isn't sung directly, the message that close in the distance continues forward into Endwalker is mixed in there. Um, so Endwalker becomes a key and gives meaning to the other songs. Know that. These are the kinds of things I like learning about. Yeah. This is why I want more interviews with Soken, but also Ishikawa is the one that explained that. Yeah. I like, yeah, I love that. That's cool. Um... In the scene where your answer plays, not just the music, but Heidelin's VA, uh, I'm going to butcher her name, so uh, the, the Japanese uh, VA. Inoue Kikoko. Kikoko. Yeah. yeah, performance were very moving. Translator's note, uh, Inoue is a veteran voice actor. She voiced Kasumi in Ranma Half. Wow. There's a lot. She's done a lot of things. And uh, she, um, these uh, these days, she tends to be cast for mother or aunt-style roles. Oh, lucky. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Ishikawa says she was very particular about her performance. Actually, Heidelin's lines were recorded twice over. After recording the final scene, uh, Inoue-san proposed that we re-record looking back on the early recordings. Uh, Vena's strength and intelligence are still lacking. Usually the voice recording for 14 is on schedule, but for Inoue-san it took twice the scheduled time. Well, at least... She was happy with it by the end, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious as to what it's like recording with some of the English voice actors, because a lot of them, particularly the ones they've gotten for recent expansions for new characters, are actually pretty prolific actors. Yes. So I imagine working with them and fitting into their schedules is not ne- not exactly easy. No. I mean, uh, Graha's voice actor is one of the leads in Bridgerton, and they're filming season two. Well, they've probably finished filming it now. It's going to come out soon. So Yeah. 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 It's... Uh... Yeah, they got some good names. Yeah. Um, The interviewer says, her performance was stunning. Uh, Sokin says, I've heard a lot of performances, but I think her performance in the scene where Vena walks where Vena walks was truly amazing. That's amazing in the English version as well. Yes. Can't speak to the Japanese version personally. No, I haven't heard that. Um, Just before Endwalker released, a Japanese translation of Answers was uploaded to the official blog. Ishikawa says, uh, on the soundtrack, there was already a Japanese text of the original draft before it was made into English, but there were different interpretations from people who listened to the song in English or people who looked at the booklet so that players in all languages can connect answers to Endwalker's story no matter if they have the soundtrack or not. We released the Japanese translation that corresponds to the English lyrics that are actually sung. So, can, by the way, the other day I tried looking at the data to see how long I've been working on 14, and it was from 2006. Ishikawa says it's already been more than 15 years. Mm. Yeah, that's that lines up because um, uh, the tech demo was from 2005. The uh, Rapture demo, I believe. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so the interviewer says, The song Close in the Distance, was it your request that the song changes as you progress the story in Ultima Thule? Ishikawa says, that's right. I thought that we should recreate the surprise of reaching Amarat and Shadowbringers in a different form. I had the idea to do this since I first thought about the story for Ultima Thule. When I made the purchase order, the idea was, starts out vague and gradually becomes clearer. But the finished song has the concept, everyone is singing together. Regarding that, Sokin-san proposed, how about a cool male singer? Mm. I'd wanted to do and that. Chris type. Pratt wasn't available, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd wanted to do that type of song for a while, so I agreed. Um, uh, as for whose perspective uh, the song is being sung from, I hope you can look back on the scene of walking across Ultima Thule and make a deduction. When you look at the Japanese translation on the soundtrack booklet, it should be easy to figure out. The interviewer, th- the interviewer, then looks at the lyrics in the booklet. This certainly is... The lyrics really do express that scene. So this is a translation note. What's your take on which character the lyrics are from uh, Are f- from the POV of? I'm reminded of the original Japanese lyrics written by Nojima for Final Fantasy VII Remake's theme song, Hollow. They're pretty poetic and vague until the end when the that line hits you that it's all from Cloud's perspective. So probably the JP lyrics for Close in the Distance will have a certain pronoun choice or speech style that makes clear which character is the POV. Yes. So based on the pronouns used, I believe it uses Oro in the Japanese translation, um, which is only used by main characters Thancred, Graha, Astinian. I think there's one other main character. I think most people have come to the conclusion that it's Gra- is written from Graha's perspective, but I don't think there's any <clears throat> concrete information. Okay. And they don't want to tell us here either, so I guess it's, yeah, it's up They to might you. tell us one day, but they're not telling us now. Right. Mm. By the way, when, uh, this is from Soken, by the way, when we finished the song, Ishida also had to listen. Straight after, he said, I want to listen to it in my car, so give me the file right away. <laughs>, <laughs> Laughs. On his commute to and from work the next day, apparently, he was listening to the song on repeat. It aligned perfectly with his own ideas. Oh, Speaking to another theory as to why people think it's Graha is because the lyrics only kick in after Graha makes his sacrifice. Ah, I see. I think that uh, we can believe that until further information. Yeah. Yes. 
Uh, the song on the radio in Garlemald also left a strong impression. Uh. What was your idea when you made the purchase order? Ishikawa says, I hmm. ordered a dark chanson. I requested a What's song. What's that? I requested a song that would bring to mind a dark chanson. periods in real history. Lyric driven French song. En chanson. From the medieval and uh, Renaissance. I requested a song that would bring to mind dark periods in real history. Mm. Okay. She means mm. a nightmares where she's trapped in the demon building. Yes, yes. Mm. Um, so the interviewer, uh, the interviewer uh, adds, are there other tracks that leave an impression? Sokin says, hmm, it's hard. There's so many this time. Laughs. If I only have, if I had to say, it's End Caller. Actually, this track wasn't originally composed for the Zodiac fight. Ishikawa says the file's title was Generic Last Boss Music. I thought there would be nothing generic about the last boss laughs <laughs> yeah this was an interesting line uh because i can't believe that was like the title they were preparing for <sighs> none of so it makes dark. sense uh um, the whole thing does it like generic battle theme for zodiac doesn't make sense and end corner well, think... final name is an unusual choice the yeah. name is very strange yeah. um generic last boss music i seem to admit this was originally the sort of the final dungeon music before they said oh, maybe, no, this yeah. is yeah too... this is too much for the end of every endwalker dungeon yeah um yeah so there we go mm. uh in the second part of the interview so can hints at his workload for 6.1 so this is uh, this is the last part. Interviewer, for 6.1 and after, will the music's ideas change a little compared to uh, in the Hydlin and Zodiac arc? Sogan says, I can't say anything right now. I'm working on it at the moment. It hasn't taken solid form yet, so I still can't answer any questions. Um, note, the, interviewer was con the interview was conducted in January. Uh, until the uh, point X, sorry, the yeah, the point one patch after an expansion, the staff are exhausted, so the workload isn't too heavy yet. It gently increases towards the point three patch, and even though I have the hope that things will calm down, it turns into despair, <laughs> despair in point four and point five. Then we run into the expansion pack from hell. That's how it <laughs> usually goes, but usually point one is a bit quieter. But this time, the workload is <laughs> exorbitant. The amount of music for 6.0 itself was absurd. If it had been the usual amount, it would have sufficed as far as 6.3. When we totaled up the resources spent, it exceeded both 3.0 and 4.0 put together. Good lord. A uh, couple of mm. the other tidbits from the... Yeah, okay, so that's the, his workload. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Um, how is... I mean, point one patches do tend to have very few new songs. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They normally only have like a. I mean, he also didn't have to compose the raid music last time. That's true. The twenty-four men raid for point one because it was all taken from near, and then the day doesn't have to make new trial music because you normally only get the ultimate. Uh, not the ultimate, sorry, the extreme of the final boss, which doesn't have new music either. Yeah. Well, six point one's gonna have. A lot, apparently. Yeah, I mean, just think about like the the all of the alliance trade's going to be myth, the twelve stuff, and it has to be new. There yeah. is no music tied to the twelve, as far as I know. So that has to be like brand new stuff, I would assume. Mm -hmm. Um. So yeah, it's uh, it's a lot of work. Uh. Okay. So these are some other tidbits from the uh, interview. Ishikawa and Soken explained how a song is made after the order is sent through. The music's overall vibe would be specified in the order. For example, for Labyrinthos, it specified man-made and Celtic. Uh, Soken mm -hmm. would receive <laughs> Soken would receive a reference song, <laughs> look at the map for the zone, and then compose the music. But he found this difficult for Endwalker. The wide variety of locations in Endwalker, from the past to the moon and the edge of the universe, made it more difficult than the more unified locations of prior expansions. And he would often think, why? When he looked at the order <laughs> sent to him. <laughs> Prior to Endwalker, he was more drawn to the map design and contents in composing uh, zone music. But this time, he focused on making the music fit the storyline. Uh, the direction of the it's performances fair. and so on were sometimes altered to fit the music. Some of the song lyrics were put into the quests. At points, in the, at points the tempo of the voice acting and dialogue were changed to fit better. 
that's clever. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there you go. It's an interesting peek again into uh, how the music uh, is made. Um, and of course, Soken's endless, uh, just uh, extreme workload, as usual. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, surely he has people under him. Like, there's a sound design team. Yes, I would he, does. he, he, he yeah. does. He yeah. has at least... There are at least two other main composers that work alongside him, Yeah, I yeah. believe. A that's... person on the subreddit did a compilation going into like which songs are more soaken style which ones are the and which are the styles of the other two composers right yeah i believe uh the in the emerald boss theme not boss theme the emerald dungeon theme was not made by soaking oh more okay. instance there you go really interesting uh okay that leaves us with the final um interview uh, sorry, this is a collection of interviews. So um, we have uh, interviews from a Game Watch, a Four Gamer, and just Gamer. Uh, so um, that's that. Uh, these are bullet points. So it's sort of like a, a best of from the uh, from the interviews. Uh, okay, so let's begin. These are all with uh, just Yoshi P. Um, the concept. <laughs> for the new story beginning in 6.1 is adventure. Uh, just like at the start of 2.0, the Warrior of oh. Light will once again set out as an adventurer. Good. That's, That's what, what we, we wanted. Want. Yeah, we've talked about that. Yeah, I don't like being the hero anymore. Let's just go back to basics for a bit. Yeah. Don't worry, we will become the hero again. But I know. But... It always starts out as us being an adventurer. Yeah. I loved the uh, like, earlier Ron Reborn when you didn't, you yeah. know, yeah, like... The... The yeah. bit with Adder's team, when you felt like you were just another adventure, that was very good. Yeah, yeah. I want to feel like that again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now we're getting that, apparently. So that's really cool, because uh, the power creep was very... It was a, it was too much at the end of this. <laughs> I don't know how we would continue after this. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Yoshida says that the first story arc was uh, only called the Hydaelyn and Zodiac arc from around 5.0. It wasn't thought of like that in 2.0 or 3.0. He's not sure yet if the next story arc will be as long as the first one. While Endwalker resolved most of the foreshadowing, there are still mysteries about the world of 14 to be discovered. 7.0 won't be as impactful if they don't have enough build-up. Mm. Yeah, there are a lot of... Right? Yeah, there are in, still mysteries of this world that we haven't... You know... D d dived into yet uh, so i wonder if he's just going to make up new stuff though <laughs> like pop up in well, the there's, there's still a dragon we don't we have never met yes there's many continents we've never visited yes that's true i mean a realm reborn was all new at the time and that was a good build-up gilmora mm -hmm. gilmora and amdabor no 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 you've seen gilmora mark Uh, You've seen the city uh, of Mark. There's a lot of the stuff. fame salt flats. Yeah, there's so much that we can. Don't make just don't make up shit. Just go oh, back. what about the new world? Yeah, just do the new world. It's yeah, yeah. Just chuck loads of random new world lore out there. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um. Oh, you, well, so obviously he has to do that as well. I mean, the new world and Mericidia exist, and there is no lore mm -hmm. tied to it other than. Some of the stuff we found well, in Arthur's Law. Uh, Mirror City has got some big stuff, yeah. Yeah. Like the Warring Triad and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Warring Dragons. Triad. Um, Last Constant to get conquered. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah. Okay, uh, on the subject of making the game more solo-friendly, he says he still believes, as he said in many interviews before, that online games and MMOs offer unique experiences. But in Final Fantasy XIV's market research surveys, the fact that the game is an online game it's the number one reason people give to not want to play it. Mm. So he thinks they can't continue with things as they currently are. Being able to say that the main story is soloable will be a useful tool for the community and PR in the future. In 7.0, in interviews and media appearances, the team will be able to say that all dungeons are soloable. And while eight man trials are uh, eight man trials are yet aren't yet supported in that situation, the burden on each individual player is relatively diluted. So it's okay even if you're a lower skilled player. 
you better hope that you're not a healer with a lower skilled other healer. <laughs> True. This is a fair point, though. I read something on, <clears throat> I think it was just the normal Final Fantasy subreddit um, about how people don't like to play 14 because it's online. And someone was mm. mentioning a very specific, very long comment about how the game gets too stressful in like high tier dungeons. And they made reference to um, you don't know about the pur- you know, the purple coming from the candles and then the orange. They got to Hawk Manor, I think, and found the game too stressful. <laughs> now, I, you know, I mean, it's fair enough that some people aren't used to it, but come on, guys, it's not that hard. What is happening? What is that? I mean, some uh... people like to play games on the easiest difficulty available. In a, in the MMO, have... there are there aren't variable difficulties for the most part. No, but even when they're playing solo, they're going to still have to figure out the mechanics of the fights. Just because so, no, no one's shouting at them doesn't make it easier. I, you it does know. a little bit because there's no there's no social pressure in that instance. Well, true, and uh, in ex- exploring like um, some of the twenty four man rays, which is a bad example, um, but they have like this law things you can interact mm. with that everyone ignores. I think it's weird, considering how this has like especially the past couple of years has brought more people online. We're more used to social interaction online, yet somehow mm. we are mmos are scary. Yeah, but there's this whole fucking metaverse MMOs are oh, scary don't because metaverse metaverse is the metaverse. Thing. i don't want to talk about that no one People wants to talk about metaverse the thing about mmos that makes them scary compared to other just online social interaction is that people are reliant on you to do things if you're on a forum or something you're not having other people rely on you for anything true oh true but you it's. I guess I'm just so used to MMOs that I don't. I don't care. But it's mm. weird. No one's gonna come and hit you. No one's gonna like no. scream <laughs> at you. There's not gonna be a child. Yeah. It's not call, a Call of People Duty. People will yell at you though in oh. capitals, or they might oh. even kick you. <laughs> Capital letters. My Achilles oh. heel. <laughs> Someone I don't know. wrote at me in capital letters. I've not been. Uh, not been right since. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I've just been on the internet for so long that I my skin is literally just uh, stone at this point. I don't care anymore. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Um, well, that's how it is. Uh, It'll be good. It'll toughen people up. I mean, it's like boot camp for the internet. I mean, they don't want a mainline Final Fantasy game to be un- inaccessible to people. So no, true. It's, and fair it's, for them to it's the to same do with um, Eleven. That that needs to be soloable. Yeah, it is and playable. Right? It uh, is and playable. That, Let's play, playable. Playable is the issue. Yeah. 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 Maybe if they made it. Have, in the comments um, complaining about us again, Mailer. Eleven's fine. I've been playing it a lot recently, and it's well, really, really good. I, think I don't mind having to go through an Excel spreadsheet to cast kill. Well, it's it's because you're you're talk you're you're very vocal on a game you barely played. I think that's... I have sat through killing dingbats three times now for three different people. That's like the first quest in the game. Yes, but it, it took take so long. It shouldn't take. It should not take three hours to finish the first well, quest see, in the game. It's, actually, it's interesting that you bring that up because this shows that is one generation of MMOs that we no longer accept, and now there's yes, a new generation true. that's coming up that does. They will not accept what we were used to. That is no, you're I right. On that. And yeah. they're going to look at well, we can be Hawk boomers. Manor in the same way and be like, "I'm not doing that shit. Give me solo yeah. EC. Remove the purple." That's why I'm advocating for this because I've already experienced this with Eleven, so I find. But I will still laugh pick... and scoff at them. I mean, I oh, yeah. I'm a boomer. Well, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I mean, of I course mean, I can. Just like the Eleven players they, looked at us this, complaining this, at the this... dingbats and went, "Oh, you fucking idiots." You only need to wait three hours. This is why they're doing things solo, so you can't laugh and scoff at them via text. Or well, I'll still laugh and scoff at them here. You, you won't, you won't say anything anyway. No, because you, you're unlikely to talk to them in a. But dungeon. I have, but I have a podcast where I can laugh the, at them and just get yeah, validation dude. through that. <laughs> <laughs> you can never escape. They're probably not watching this. Even if you are playing solo, if you are playing solo, I'm laughing and scoffing at you right now. <laughs> I want you to know That's that. True. Yeah. And actually, to go back to the eleven example, the fact that the dingbats took three hours. Yeah. 
invited loads of veteran players to join in so it made the game more social which is what you don't want so yeah mm. 11 should have higher drop rates to get rid of people helping you out i do think they should increase the drop rates on the first class yeah they they should it's a bad introduction like yeah, yeah to... make the game grindy later on but not the first couple of i quests. wonder if we did something wrong i don't understand no, we were there just, for like it's three just hours bad luck yeah i don't know yeah it didn't that's, take that long for that's my the problem with rng is no, that they're... it took Mela like 30 minutes yeah which oh, is a long time oh, to gather the problem dingbat also wings. that the dingbats only spawn during a certain time so once you oh, pass maybe, that time yeah. you had to we and had to wait i think for it was at night yeah. yeah yeah and there were the skeletons and stuff yeah good yeah, times yeah. eh can't yeah. wait to go back yeah yeah oh just i just want to say though that i don't mind that they're adding solo stuff um i just thought no <laughs> if you're struggling on hawk manor i'm allowed to laugh I, that's just how it is you are uh, i think another I, yeah. I also I think another weirdly stressful thing about Hawk Manor is just like after the second boss, everyone teleporting away. That's the return. hardest part. Oh yeah, that's you, just if you, if you never use. Re yeah. No, it doesn't explain it because the no. game doesn't actually want you to do that. No. That is why they make a make it so that the doors on both sides of the first boss's like battle arena like open up. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that, that you can more quickly go there, but it's much faster as you use return. Yes. Yes. Yeah, that is a bad design. I don't know why they couldn't just like spawn a portal that you could click and then exactly. you, well yeah. i don't know why they haven't added that because they do that all the time now i mean yeah. look at matoya's yeah. relic yeah oh yeah. yeah uh okay uh yoshida says we're doing this so the community and players can say to their friends the main story the story is fully soloable so come try it out yeah it's a good idea as well yeah that's yeah sure i, I think... mean yes it's fine yeah I the don't... main story is if completely can... soloable, but I don't. Obviously, I know you don't like playing multiplayer well, games, so we'll never talk about it again. Yeah. Like... They're learning in like, uh, like a room full of like a childproof room, so that when they finally get to the end, they might be more. Oh no! But it's playing all, with other also an echo chamber. If they make mistakes, but there's no consequences, they'll think that's right. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. It'll, it might pro give them bad habits. Yeah. There are definitely... They'll have to program the trusts in those dungeons to do correct mechanics and stuff. Like, well, you know. they will. Yeah, they but program you know the trusts some... to do mechanics correctly in modern Yeah, dungeons. but they mess them up sometimes, don't they, for like lore reasons and stuff, but... Yeah. Yeah. You just have to be careful. Yeah. Uh, right. Um... Uh, he thinks messaging it could overcome the game's. He thinks this messaging could overcome the game's genre. He also wants the appeal of playing with others, of sharing the world with other players, to reach this new player base. Yeah, because I mean, the to me the only problem I have with this is that he even says it here could overcome the game's genre, like as if we need to hide what this game is, like. This game is deeply flawed because it's an MMO. I don't think they'd want to. I don't think that's what he's saying. I think what he's saying is that the MMO genre is very bad. It can be impenetrable. <laughs> no, it can be impenetrable to certain types of people, and by obscuring that for them, it may might allow them to take their first steps into it and then decide that they are okay with this. Yeah. I mean, I, as someone who didn't really play MMOs before fourteen. I still don't really play any MMOs other than 14. I did not want to play the original 14 1.0 because, like, oh, MMO is scary. Well, I mean, that's how it is. I, that's just something I don't understand, I guess. Uh, okay, uh, Yoshida says, uh, Honestly, I think there are uh, hardly any game consoles not connected to the internet. That's why I want to retire the label online game. The label online game isn't attached to something like isn't attached to something like Fortnite. Right now, the game is called Final Fantasy XIV Online, but I want to remove the online part. Why do we only use that label about MMOs? So he wants, it to, he wants to rename the game. Yeah. To hide the fact that it's an online game. Why? Is he, it's a very strange take. I think it is too. He, People he, play when, online games more than is, ever now. This is what I tried to say earlier. He sounds embarrassed about the fact that it's an MMO. Yeah. But, like, what are the biggest genres in gaming? Like, MOBAs and FPS games, they're all online. 
just because yeah. they're not MMO. I mean, well, I think it's specifically the usage of the word online. I think it's an unnecessary piece of information now, to be honest. Well, true, but then single player and multiplayer, I suppose, is all you need. Well, removing online would make me feel like I've been duped if I if I didn't know anything about Final Fantasy fourteen and I see oh Final Fantasy fourteen I've heard about Final Fantasy I'll try this like not really knowing that it's an online game I'd be like I had a subscription shooketh yeah if I in fairness having MMO helps because it that implies that there's some sort of fee also, or whatever yeah maybe the idea is to dupe people oh that's that's insidious that is a little insidious but yeah maybe uh yeah okay they could do similar they could like include your 14 subscription in like playstation plus or something could, that could in, yeah and like do things like that so don't people don't to. feel like they're paying as much money no they probably wouldn't but that's a good way of keeping people yeah, into Fortnite is a good example. Well, is it a good example? Uh, I guess. But with you Fortnite, you already know. Fortnite. But you co- it has the same implication. It's a battle royale game. You know what you're getting. It's like the cookie, you know. You, when you say MMO, you know what you're getting. Yeah, because Fortnite is not coming from a line of single-player games. Final Fantasy does. No. So I feel like the distinction online is I think it's kind important. of important. But I'm not completely against removing it either. I mean, if if it, I don't know, it's that's a bit complicated. I feel I feel I, like it's kind of trying to trick people into buying the against game. the removal of it simply because of the idea that it would make the naming naming system more consistent. Yeah, that's true. Well, no, that's the idea fair. that the, there is not just like a Final Fantasy fourteen. There's I'm fine for them removing it online because I have never but... referred to Final Fantasy fourteen as Final Fantasy fourteen no. online. Which no, I, no one does. No. That's why I also kind of agree with them. It's, and it's like unnecessary. It's like vestigial. Just like Eleven being called... It's called Final Fantasy Eleven. Does it actually... It is called Final Fantasy Eleven Online. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty sure is. it is. I need to check now because... Uh, it is called it, yeah. It is Final Fantasy Eleven yeah. Online. Online. Yes, it yeah. is, yeah. Yeah, that is also... Yeah, that's a fair point from chat. The online implies that there is an offline, which there is not. It doesn't There's only one imply. version of the game. I think that's a... I mean, that's like... Do we call, like, Final Fantasy IX... Final Fantasy IX offline? Exactly. The fact that there's... Like... Uh, no, I know. That's a no, this that's is an a, unusual thing to draw a conclusion from. I think it's just an unnecessary piece of information. Well, online makes you, like... You have to be online to play this game. You know well, it's Diablo coming... Diablo 3 has some... to be... You have to be online to play Diablo 3. Okay. Well, <laughs> that uh, doesn't have true. online in its name. <laughs> but... I mean, less people would have played it if they'd been more straight up with the systems. That was a big. I don't. I don't. You know what? Trying to trick people. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's what they're doing. Again, it's this like I don't know. I don't know. As long as it's clear on the box. Yeah. Uh. Okay. It doesn't matter hugely either way. But then it will go away from the Final Fantasy XI online, like the MMOs have online in the title. That's now an established system, I guess. Yeah. Does World of Warcraft doesn't have online in it, does it? No. No. But that's a separate now line of game. It's Warcraft 1, 2, 3. And then World, World of Warcraft. Warcraft. Yeah, Because it separates mm. itself. Yeah, that's true. Whatever. We'll see what happens. They're, they're not going to remove it until at least 7.0, if they do. Um, mm-hmm. When the interviewer asks if there are plans for a whole of the intermediate, Yoshida says there is. Uh, this is a difficult issue to address. The new trust system covering all MSQ dungeons with other players, you can rely on them. But if you want to clear dungeons quickly, you can't rely on the trusts. So the new system will be a means of self-improvement. He implies the team is discussing a system for players to improve their skills beyond what's available in Stone Sky C, since he acknowledges there aren't otherwise systems within the game for players to improve. However, due to periodic changes to job balancing and so on, it would be difficult to implement a system such as giving you a score at the end of a dungeon run. There's mm-hmm. one good way of improving um, how you play the game uh, to run the content. <laughs> Why do you have to have this padded arena where 
you like I understand like wanting your de- you know stone sky sky sea so you know you've got the DPS to clear the fight. Yeah. But you don't need like a mimicked fight of every single fight to know the mechanics before. It's like watching a guide beforehand. That system exists, so I don't know. Just find a group of people to practice with. Okay, you're yeah, making that sound maybe. very easy. Okay, I okay at that point. As someone who uh, at some point had no one to play with in 14 when I deleted my character, started a whole new life, that is not easy. That is not a thing you just do. Get a few, get some people to get, just get some people together and practice. That's you not, just chuck you, out a party finder and it will fill, even though you might not like it and you might feel uncomfortable, okay. it will fill. No, I think Stone Sky amount is, of zodiac. No. And hide limb I'm sorry, this is where we part ways, Mela. <laughs> I do not agree <laughs> with you there. I think I think stuff like Stone Sky Sea is important for people that... No, I... for the Because now but... we're talking about things that are higher level. The pressure is much higher uh, on stuff mm. like that. A... And I know we... Remember, group. we're very cushioned, Mela, because we are fortunate to have access to more... To people. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Most yeah. people do not have that. So it well, is a bit more of a I social fully cleared pressure. Both extremes outside of this group. Yes, I know. Only using Party Finder, and it was yes. slow. But you are the kind of person that does that. But not. I'm all... not actually. I only did it this time for a big chair. Well, I don't like doing it really. But oh well, there. You... <laughs> okay, well then you. But it pushed. It pushed. You know, I I dis- You know, I made that decision, and I was able to practice them. I don't and know. it worked because I got a clear. I don't know what the my, po- my point is. Yeah, there are systems to improve yourself. You just have to search for them. You don't necessarily need Yoshi P to come up with, you know, a mock version of the fight to practice it in before doing the real fight because the fight exists. Just get through it. I don't think that's necessarily what he's saying. No. If it's for like you know markers and stuff, fine. <laughs> Like this is the look away. That's marker. kind of what I want. Yeah, that's kind of that's what fine. I thought. Well, I'm okay with that. To be, but they never. But then there's worked on so that many marks in the game, and sometimes they change appearance but do the same thing. There's a very lack of cohesion. They're much Mela. more consistent than they used to be, Mela. This yeah. expansion for sure, because this highlights all tank busters as well. So this is the best expansion for cohesion. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, anyways, moving on, um, uh, as a non-MSQ <laughs> dungeon, <laughs> and this is really sad, guys, I have really sad news, uh, Aurum Vale will not be included in the Trust expansion. I wonder, I wonder if that's also because Aurum Vale is a bit of a finicky dungeon for the Trust system, like, it isn't, oh, like, a very linear dungeon. They have to dungeon. use items. Yeah. I mean, they could just make them invulnerable with... to them. But nah. they've done that with the non with the non story dungeons that we've received in heaven in not heavens in um Endwalker and uh, uh Shadowbringers as well. Which it's not as obvious to us because there's only been four. Yeah. But <clears throat> there are dungeons where you can't bring trusts in. Well, I know I also chat i know it says it's because it's a non-msq dungeon uh but i i was wondering if maybe there's diff- other reasons or unveil that that is another reason yeah tri- uh or unveil, a good excuse if there is another reason yeah or unveil has historically been a bit of a horrible dungeon to deal with or unveil is covered by squadrons that is true that is yeah. true but the, the squadrons are but very... they're getting rid of the squadrons aren't they Squadrons don't really no, I do. Be- I believe that was misinformation. Squadrons okay. don't do mechanics. They're just invulnerable no, to they, things they that can kill, like that requires them to do things. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, the interviewer asks if the new trust dungeons will have their own dialogues. Yoshida implies some will and some won't. Nameless adventurers don't tend to be talkative, but when you have a that's name, that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> Um, when you have named NPCs with you, they will talk. This will be discussed in the 6.1 live letter, but the trust system will also be renamed from, in Japanese, Faith, since that name is meant to reflect your relationship with the Scions. Okay. The Faith system. Uh, the MSQ relent will probably be abolished, uh, and the new four-man dungeons will be suitable for leveling. (laughs) What will happen when the Gaius fight is a... 
spoiler, he can't talk about yet. Oh. Uh, the mechanic uh, of riding no, the Magitek armor in Magi Praetorium <laughs> will be completely changed. These are big historical losses as someone who's yeah. suffered through that so we, much. We have to but do... I like Maggie. There's a lot of things that are about to go away, actually. We're losing the Wolfstan as well. So we need to do a stream mm -hmm. where we do Wolfstan and the MSQ roulette <laughs> one last yeah. time. Specifically, I think the Praetorium is the one we should actually make sure yeah. we do. I suspect that with the Moogle Tombstone event, it, which assumedly there will be one, yeah. um, we will have plenty of opportunities. We don't necessarily have to save this for the last stream before the True. patch goes oh, yeah, down. One True. final push. But I kind of feel like I, uh, it's going to be gone forever in its current form. That's, yeah. oh, yep. that's very big. Um, but yeah. very sad. Uh, when the trust system updates are completed, he plans to retire the squadron system. Uh, uh apolog there's an edit here. Apologies, my wording should have been more precise here. The exact quote is that the squadron system will be replaced and unified with trusts. Since people have got attached to their squadron members, there may be some form of compensation. So that what sounds does that mean? like it's basically so disappearing. Squadrons are stuff. going away. So they're just That's being absorbed sad. into the trust system, I guess. How are we going to rank up? What compensation? I don't does know. That mean? I don't know. How are we going to rank up our grand company? Yeah, because currently there are two tiers that are uh, I two guess or even three that. ranks that are tied to it right now. Yeah. yeah. I hope I'm the max one. I think it's like captain or something. <sighs> so yeah, it's captain. That's sad. Um, that is sad because, well, actually, no. I oh, know. Cecily's going. Another. Yes. Oh, I'm going to have one final run with her where I, I let her die all the oh. time. Stupid Cecily. These, these, this expansion, like the patches are making so many Aurora episodes for me right now. So many. Rue, you better make sure you've got footage though, because oh. you don't have a. I have to do like a big. The game. Yeah, I have to do a big like recording session. Um. Okay. Uh, the request for the graphics update uh, came from Yoshida rather than the graphics team. It was quite a big request. Everyone was almost at their limit, so of course it was difficult. Because of the increased workload, it could end up uh, wringing our necks too. But when I asked the team, everyone said, okay, let's do it. Uh, nice. Yeah. Yoshida says, it's hard, being, cool. it's hard being both director and producer. Both motivation yeah. and persuasion are necessary to development. If I was just producer and the director was someone else, it might end up like, time to think about a graphics update now too, Naoki-chan. But, of course, there aren't producers of that caliber. Laughs. Only he wow. can do it. Only he can do this. Wow. Okay, humble brag. <laughs> Not even humble, just brag. Uh, regarding PS4 support, he says that, while this is also painful to the dev team, by 7.0, the situation could still be that many people who want to buy a PS5 can do so due to the shortages. So people on PS4 They're hardware... They're planning for the worst case scenario. <laughs> yeah. That's so, fair. So people on PS4 hardware can rest easily at least as far as 7.0. The first graphics update will completely include PS4. Graphics options will be introduced, for example, if you want less fog or lower quality textures in return for better frame rate on PS4 and PS PC. Yeah, I still hold <laughs> fast that I think 8.0 is the death of the PS4. I'd it's, go with that. Yeah. I think that's likely. Uh, he can't give a firm yes or no answer to whether there will be more character customization options, but says in terms of workload, this is difficult to implement alongside the graphics uh, update. So no sliders. No sliders. They'll do anything to not have sliders, it seems. Yeah, well, it sounds like it's such a fucking horrible mess I know. to deal with. He just wants the game to die before he has to do that, I think. Well, maybe, <laughs> like, I feel like if if 8.0 is the end of the PS4, maybe they'll be like, okay, let's... Oh, he won't. We, this He'll tangle... be like, now it's graphics update part two, and I... then, oh, this expansion is but... going to be really big, so... But doesn't it start to feel like the character creator is, like, the last bowl of spaghetti? Like, the last, like, truly yeah. big bowl of spaghetti they have left. Oh, yeah. It's I want to know why, I, why certain, like, races can only have certain sliders. Yeah. When we know that other races have the same sliders, but for whatever reason, there's just a cap on sliders <laughs> per race. Yeah. It's... This oh. game's for a game this popular. Yeah. This game has possibly the not not the worst 
character customization, but no, very much bottom decent. like five it, it, MMOs. In it's like four face options. Yeah, yeah. God, the Come dream on. of having sliders for everything is so. Even WoW has like, and even like that is also the same system where you just piece together things. Yeah. Even that's got more Ooh. options, and that's like a twenty-year-old game. Yeah. Yeah. Please. Yeah, it's improve. difficult. It, we have reached a point where there are so many players that having a unique looking character is almost impossible at this point. Um, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, when he showed the photorealistic Warrior of, Warrior of Light on the live stream, he expected there to be more of a backlash, but the comments were actually understanding. Everyone was kind towards the devs. I think it was Why confusion, would... Yoshi P. It was most confusion. I think it was confusion and also the fact that you made it look uncanny as fuck. Yes. Yes. He wanted people to be like, that looks more rubbish, Yoshi P. That's not good. Don't yeah. do that. And then he'd have been like, well, don't worry because we're not doing that. <laughs> yeah. But it kind of was just a bit more awkward, like, oh, well, we're not doing that. Long. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, on to what extent the 6.x story will connect to the 7.0 story. Uh, quote, well, if it doesn't show hints, you, can, you can't connect, to, uh, connect it to what comes next. Um, that said, 4.x didn't connect much to 5.0, so it depends on the circumstances. I think this is a benefit of being a live service title. We can adjust the script depending on everyone's reactions. I'm starting to think up imagery for the 7.0 trailer, but I don't think uh, what to make of it yet. But I don't know what to make of it yet. But you can tell from my expression, he's having fun making something. Or in the middle of 6.x, you might be thinking, what, what? And you won't be able to imagine 7.0 yet. So please look forward to it. Tell from my expression, he's having fun making something. Yeah. And you can tell it. You can tell it. His wry it. smile. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he's the, Yoshi P is the biggest, like, oh, something exciting is going to happen. You'll never guess what. He yeah. says that for everything. Yeah, he does. He does. Mm -hmm. Um... Well, yeah, there you go. Those were the interviews uh, from uh, a lot of sources. Um, that is also, um, conveniently, the end of the show. Um, if you're watching On Demand, link is a link to all the uh, interviews are in the description. Uh, thank you for watching this episode of Speakers of Heidelin. Uh, remember to follow on Twitter at speakersxiv, twitch.tv slash speakersofheidelin, youtube.com slash speakersxiv, exclamation discord in chat. If you want to join our discord server, if you're watching On Demand, link is in the description. Remember to send us mogmail at speakersxiv.com slash mogmail. And if you're watching live, the post show is coming up where we'll be reading questions from the syndicate. Goodbye! Bye.